So, g'day everyone, Rob the Axe Man here from Axe Man's Fishing and Adventures, and we're back out on Port Phillip Bay today. Solo trip, it's 4 a.m., just launched from Martha's Cove, and I'm just coming across a bit of a mark where I've caught fish before, just uh, having a sound up. I'm liking the look of the water temperature. Water temperature's now at 18.2, where the other day when we were out it was lucky to get to 16. So that's a lot better now. The feed will, uh, the fish will start to feed and breed, and uh, hopefully we can catch something today. So I'm still on the donuts for uh, 2021 for a snapper. So I'm hoping that today I can uh, have a good fish and maybe get one in the boat. That would be absolutely awesome. Anyway, we'll see how we go, guys. Alright everyone, so I'm out so far, Mount Martha, probably between 18 and 20 metres of water. Um, picked up a bit of bait from the Daniel Market yesterday. I've got some fresh garfish, some pillies, uh, silver whiting, and I picked up a squid too. I've got some fresh squid on my own that I've caught. And picked up a couple of bay trout, which is your Australian salmon, which I'll take a fillet or chunk bait on those as well. So they're the baits that I'm going to be using. I'll chuck out different ones on different rods and see how we go the first one i'm going to use is silver whiting just a nice small one so in through about the middle of the fish there pull it right the way through and just above the scale head plate there out through the head the tough part push it down so you've got plenty of exposure flip it over the second hook on the snell in out, pull it down a little bit so both sides have got a really good exposure on the hook then a couple of half hitches around the tail this one's just got a small ball sinker on it so it will just float down nicely and we'll see how we go first one in the water Flip the arm on it on the bait runner so it can pick it up and run with it. And if it runs a little bit, then I can flick it over and snap it and see how we go. The other one I'm going to do always stick a snapper snatcher down, you just don't know what, what you're going to get. So it's a good idea to have one of them always down. So I'm going to an inch wide rings so I think this one is uh, a black magic one it's called pinky which is my favorite and I know uh, Lee Urena down there at uh, Melbourne Maroon he loves it too he told me just the other day it's his favorite go-to one for a snapper snatcher boys down there at Melbourne Marine sellers sell all of those and I'm going to stick a pilly head on the other one up high on the higher one because um, obviously you know flathead love them if you go up a little bit higher you might not get so many flathead and just one straight through that gill plate that's so nice and tough these are circle hooks so little sinker for the bottom Right. The snapper snatchers, I like to drop them off the side of the boat and just wind them so they're, you know, half a metre off the bottom. And any movement with the boat rocking up and down, not that there's much today, we've probably got about three or four knots at the moment. Just let him drop all the way to the bottom. Good 
pretty good there. Feel it on the bottom now, so just raise it up, a couple of turns, and it'll just bounce nicely with the boat. Alright, so we've got a bit of activity down there on the bottom. When you see that wavy line like that, it's usually a fish just sitting underneath us. Um, you get the arch when it moves through, but when you get a wiggly line like that, I'm informed that that is a fish sitting underneath us. So what do we do now? Get some burley in. A couple of pillies. See if we can keep it around. Or hook it up even better. So we've got a high tide coming in in about an hour's time I'm oh, sorry sunrise in about an hour's time and then a high tide in about two and a half hours time so got plenty of time to set up and get everything ready alright what do we got on this one yeah, it's a single hook what I might put on the single hook is Bit of the squid head, about half the squid head. top to start with, right the way through, and then down, down underneath the eye there. So you've got plenty of exposure on the hook, nice dangly bits, so I just take that longer one off. I don't mind using those later for some whiting. Now I just need a sinkers will pop in here and obviously use as much weight as we do when we're in Western Port for Port Phillip. I think it's probably a little two ounce weight and then the easy rig using 30 pound mono 50 pound black magic leader down to a 5 0 Octopus hook. So we're swinging around a little bit. Go out wide with this one. Now back. Have about one and a half kilos of drag. Set that up. Right now, bring one up, I can use four rods. These are both snells. Let's uh, try something a little bit different.
two hand sinker again. Easy rig. And I'm going to use a piece of garfish. I'll keep the head as another bait for something else. I do love catching garfish and eating them. Right. They are a good bait too, the snapper. Pull that right the way through. Fish, rub it out. And through this one. Out, so I've got good exposure on both sides of the bait. And half hitch this one, I'm going to wrap around the bait and also the end of the hook. Keep it nice and tight up against the fish. There we go. Good exposure, both sides of the bait. If I was out there, I'd eat it. <laughs> All right. Getting out. Let's go and put him straight out the back at the moment. It's nice to have a bit of a fan with your rods. Spread them out. Now we've got all these in. We'll just uh, we'll be burying up and waiting. Hopefully one of the rods will go off. Alright, so when I'm burling up, there's a few different ways and methods that I use. I've got this one here, which I'm finding really, really good. It's 100% um, pure pilchard, but it's solid. Like you make it up into little balls, and it will hold together and it will break up as it slowly sinks down. I find it good in the burly pot as well, because it will stay solid for a while. And then it will break up slowly as it sort of stays in the water so yeah, I'm finding that one quite good I'm very happy and I'll continue to use that one one I've just started to use trying it out this season is the red bullets fish on you know I love the fish on so I'm probably a little bit disappointed in these in the fact that as you can see there's a lot of powder in there great if you're gar fishing but if I'm fishing for snapper it's, uh, it's like this bucket I don't know if it's just the way it is but this bucket seems to have a lot of just the broken up pellets so yeah. I'm a bit disappointed in that one and don't know if I'll try it again but anyway we'll see I'll speak to someone at the shop and see if it's supposed to be like that saying that the snapper that we caught the other day with coal out here did have some of these pellets in its guts, so snap and do eat them. And sometimes with those pellets, I'll mix them up in the bucket, a little bit of tuna oil, and throw in a few pilchards. I actually might make a little mix up to put in my uh, burly bomb. to help soak up that oil. And this one here is the burly bomb. The good thing about this is if you're not throwing it in the water, it's not drifting in the current, you're dropping it off 
right underneath the bait where you want it and then the fish will come up the other burly trail find it you see that a few pellets bit of oil a few pillies nice little mix let me just close that up rods are going this side so i'll grab it over here straight down let's let it run its course bottom, wrap your hand around it, a couple of good jerks like that. That will hopefully release it and we'll have it right down underneath the bait, all that burly. Get the fish to come underneath here would be great. So it looks like we've just got a bit of sunrise happening now, as much as possible due to the cloud, cloud cover. Now it's time to sit back and watch these rods. 